Hello, I'm Andrew Gibson and this is Gibson on Books. In this week's episode, I'm going to be reviewing Wolfbane by Frederick Pohl and C.M. Cornbluth. Wolfbane is widely regarded as one of the very best science fiction stories from the 1950s. It was originally serialised in Galaxy magazine in 1957 with illustrations by Wally Wood. The writing team of Cyril M. Cornbluth and Frederick Pohl, who were both successful science fiction writers in their own right, worked together to produce some of the most acclaimed science fiction novels of the 1950s. Significantly, they were both members of the Futurians. The Futurians was a collective of science fiction fans, many of whom who went on to become editors and writers. The Futurians followed Marxist ideology and were based in New York City and were a major force in the development of contemporary science fiction. Wolfbane marked the final collaboration between Cornbluth and Pohl. Tragically, Cyril M. Cornbluth died at the age of just 34 in Leverton, New York, rushing to get to an interview for the position of editor of the magazine of fantasy and science fiction. Cornbluth had to shovel snow from his driveway, which made him late. He suffered a fatal heart attack on the platform after running to catch his train. This was and remains an inestimable loss to the world of science fiction. Wolfbane opens with a very ambitious premise. An advanced alien civilization called the Pyramids has invaded the solar system and has stolen planet Earth and all of humanity with it. The story begins hundreds of years into this dystopian future where the shattered remnants of the human race eke out a tightly calorie controlled existence on the wandering earth. The only warmth comes from the moon that the aliens have turned into a tiny artificial sun. When the little sun was burned to a clinker, they, whoever they were, for men saw only one pyramid, would hang a new one in the sky. It happened every five clock years, more or less. It was the same old moon-turned sun, but it burned out, and the fires needed to be rekindled. The first of these suns had looked down on an earthly population of ten billion. As the sequence of suns waxed and waned, there were changes, climatic fluctuation, all but immeasurable differences in the quantity and kind of radiation from the new source. The changes were such that the 45th sun looked down on a shrinking human race that could not muster up a hundred million. A frustrated man drives inward. It's the same with the race. The hundred million that clung on to existence were not the same as the bold, vital ten billion. The thing on Everest had in its time received many labels too. The devil, the friend, the beast a pseudo-living entity of unknown electrochemical properties. The world-building in the first section of the book is remarkable. Pohl and Kornbluth do a brilliant job of explaining how the leftovers of the human race have organised their society around meditation as a form of societal control. The pinnacle of meditative success is translation, once a higher state of consciousness is reached, translation occurs and the meditator disappears. The process of translation initially seems to reward extremes of passivity, so this could be seen as the alien's method of controlling and subjugating the populace. However, it's the constraints of this straight-jacketed lifestyle that frequently causes citizens to break down and run amok, attacking anyone within reach. A tiny proportion of the remaining population of the Earth is different from everyone else. They self-identify as wolves and are considered a threat by the rest of society. Wolves see themselves as fundamentally better than everyone else and refer to citizens as sheep. However, Pohl and Kornbluth ironically invert this metaphor as wolves actively try to prevent sheep from finding their settlements while wolves are caught by sheep and are ritually sacrificed by having their spinal fluid drained and their heads chopped off. 
Wolfbane is often cited as a source of inspiration for the original Matrix movie. The similarities are certainly quite startling. Wolfbane is one of the first works of science fiction to portray subjugated human beings that are integrated into machines. It also reveals this to be the true reality behind the curtain in a very similar manner to the original Matrix movie that was released 40 years after Wolfbane was published. The machine integration element of Wolfbane is well thought out and nuanced. In particular, the concept of hive minds that allow human beings to complete tasks of a level of complexity beyond their individual abilities is beautifully realised. In this respect, Wolfbane can be seen as an early example of transhumanism in science fiction. The concept of a snowflake of human minds is written in a very accessible way that is both easy to read and quite compelling for such a sophisticated concept. I appear, thought Chopal Crazily, to be a sort of eight-branch snowflake. Each of my branches is a human body. He stirred and added another datum. I appear also to be in a tank of fluid. And yet I do not drown. There were certain deductions to be made from that. Either someone, the pyramids, had done something to his lungs, or else the fluid was as good an oxygenating medium as air, or both. Suddenly, a burst of data lights twinkled on the board below him. Instantly, and involuntarily, his sixteen hands began working the switches, transmitting complex directions in a lightning-like stream of on-off clicks. Chopard relaxed and let it happen. He had no choice. The power that made it right to respond to the board made it impossible for his brain to concentrate whilst the response was going on. Perhaps, he thought drowsily, he would never have awakened at all if it had not been for the long period with no lights. So, what is Wolfbane about? Well, without spoiling the narrative, at its core, it's a book about misplaced faith. How it is human nature to follow, how freedom is based around calories consumed. It's a book about how true individuals are very rare, but also deeply valuable. It is a book about heroes fighting against impossible odds. After reading Wolfbane, you will never think about a pan of boiling water in quite the same way ever again. Pole and Kornbluth succeed in providing an astonishingly brutal vision of what an alien civilization might be like. Wolfbane is the sort of story that sticks with you long after you have turned the last page. In many respects, this is due to the ruthless nature of the alien menace that abducts the Earth as part of its endless and mindless quest for new components. Wolfbane comes highly recommended. Wolfbane by C.M. Kornbluth and Frederick Pohl, with an all-new introduction by Andrew G. Gibson. The Audible edition is narrated by James C. Gibson. The Earth has been ripped from the sun by a runaway planet whose inhabitants have their own sinister plans for Earth's resources. Humankind is dying out, but there are those who defy convention and refuse to give in. Feared by ordinary citizens, these wolves are preparing to fight back against the aliens. James twists himself into the story, perfectly balancing an emotional joy with each sentence and fine individual voicing for every character. Buy it now on Amazon, Audible 